It's Friday. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spilling Our Beans, Copy with Rob. We are in our 42nd Bible study on the book of Mark. And a lot more to come. I just want to make an announcement. We've got a lot more to come. We've got more coming from Grandma's Kitchen. That'll be done this week. We have an interview with Ray Sidnor, a friend of mine who is a pastor down in Baltimore. Uh, played for the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the 1980s for the Philadelphia Eagles as well. And he was a five-year athlete at the University of Wisconsin playing football and basketball. Ray's a great guy, six foot nine, 330 pounds. We make the joke, yes, I think you've heard it, that when he comes into town, our favorite restaurant too, and his is City Barbecue. We love to go up there and grab some chicken and we have to call City Barbecue ahead and say, Ray's on his way. So <laughs> Ray's a great guy. He's going to be our first online interview um, out of Baltimore. He's doing a prison ministry down in Texas. Been very active. Him and I have done radio on Chaos Radio with my friend Derek Oliver. We did uh, a radio program a few years ago. I think it was during Easter uh, where we even had, we had over 50,000 live uh, listeners while we did a, a podcast with Derek from Chaos Radio. And Derek's radio is up, so we hope look forward to working with him as well. So yeah, a lot of things to come. This is the next level of spilling our beans. Got a lot of people helping us out. Our, uh, our uh, all our legal stuff is done, and we'll be finishing that up. So today is uh, lesson number forty-two in the study of Mark, um, and this is one. This is going to be one of three. We're still talking about Jesus in Mark chapter twelve, where he's arguing. Well, he's not arguing, but he's being tested by the religious authorities on his stance, by what authority he does the things that he does. Why did he clear the temple? And what I see here and what we're going to see here in a minute is we're going to see him take on each arm of the religious leadership or temple leadership here in this chapter of the next few verses. He's going to take on the Pharisees, the Sadducees. And the teachers of the law individually, and I'm going to break these up into three parts. Today's part number one, where Jesus takes on the Pharisees. They're being questioned. Remember, they're trying to trap him. Number one, they were trying to arrest him. Number two, they're trying to kill him. And in this portion, you're going to see Jesus pointing out, why are you trying to trap me? And the advice I gave to some of you all when you're doing evangelism is please don't waste your time with people who just want to argue. They have a right to their opinion. They can do what they want to do, but I certainly don't want to waste my time with somebody that really doesn't want to or can't be converted to the truth, the truth of the gospel or to the to bring them to the cross of Christ. If they're going to resist, that's their choice, but I'm going to go to the next person that really does want to discuss genuinely the biblical truth about salvation, and the teachings of Christ, grace, and all that stuff. So, we are in Mark chapter 12. We're going to begin today at verse 13. Jesus is taking on the Pharisees, and you're going to see the Pharisees and the Herodians come at him together. The Herodians, traditionally with the Pharisees, were enemies. They did not like each other, but now they have a common enemy. Therefore, they're going to come together against Jesus Christ, and we're going to have a little bit of a, an argument. They're testing him. They're trying to arrest him. They're trying to kill him. And as Jesus will point out in this scripture, you're trying to trap me. He sees it coming. He's good. He's like William Wallace in Braveheart. He can always spot a, uh, a trap or an ambush. <clears throat> so here we go. We're in uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 13. It says, later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. Now, here it is again. They're not there to hear the truth. They're not there to really take on and think through what Jesus is teaching them. They're here to argue. They're here to trap him, have him arrested, and murder him. And if, if you want to know why he cleansed the temple, this is why. This is the heart of the leadership of the temple. They want to kill him. They came to him and said, Teacher, look at how they butter him up here. This is a tactic. They're going to butter him up. Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. Did they know that? Did they, they may know that, but did they believe that? But you aren't swayed by men. So look at it. They're buttering Jesus up. They're trying to soften him for the kill. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. In other words, he does not respect. He's not a person that's going to be awestruck because somebody in Hollywood gave him some time or 
because uh, you know you're a person of position or power. Jesus treats all men the same. And if you read James chapter two, I believe it is that that is where the, this is this is a teaching on that that we should respect all people the same, regardless of financial uh, or uh, capability or or power or potential or position or fame. Treat everybody the same. Jesus does that. He's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't have to be. He's God of the universe. You're not swayed by men because you paid no attention to who they are. And my priests, remember Matthew 23, love attention. They love respect. They love the greetings. They love the fame. But you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. So, yeah, I do. He does. and uh, But they're just, they don't care. So, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Here comes the big question. This is the big whopper question they want to present to him to catch him in his words. And this is the question. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? That's a big question, especially in that time when there wasn't law enforcement like we have today. And some people don't agree that law enforcement is good. I do. There are some bad cops out there, very few. Uh, but most of the guys that are on the road want to do their job properly. And they ain't doing it to be rich. Let me tell you, they're out there risking their lives so we can sleep good at night. So in this situation, though, a breaker of the law, in other words, a person, if he would say, for example, um, yes, people should pay taxes. Well, the Jews are going to get mad at him. Because by Jesus, with his influence, if he says, yeah, pay your taxes, you should do that, and just bluntly says that, then it would be the same equivalent of him supporting Rome, Rome's power, Rome's idolatry, um, their immoral ability, their immoral uh, lifestyles, their positions, their oppression, and the oppression of the Jews. He would be endorsing the oppression of the Jews. So if he answers that yes, plainly, and they know this, then they could rally the troops, they could rally the people around them, they could rally the Jews, the followers, and then they could come after Jesus with the populist crowd and get him arrested. And they would gather support had he said that. And they know that, so he doesn't say that either. If he says no, they know they could go back, and I'm sure the Herodians would be thrilled to run back to Caesar and say, Jesus is defying your law. He's undermining your position, and uh, this is straight up treason. We need to have him arrested and murdered. And I'm sure Caesar would have no trouble doing that. I believe at this time, and I'm sorry, I think it was Tiberius Caesar who was in power at this time. He uh, And so, anyway... Um, this is the question. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Is it right to pay taxes in the United States? Absolutely. Whose picture's on uh, your money? The presidents of the United States. It's their money. They make it. They print it. We earn it, but um, we, we pay taxes, and that's all lawful. So there we go. So Jesus knew their hypocrisy. You know, like I said, he could spot an ambush. Um, why are you trying to trap me? I love that he calls them out. He is going to put them on notice right now that he recognizes their tactics. He sees right through them. I love that about Jesus. And, and we, we can be that way as well. We can be bold as believers. I see what you're trying to do here. I'm not going to fall for it. But Jesus knew the hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarii and let me look at it. So they brought the coin and he asked them, whose portrait is this? Whose inscription is this? So it, it's a description of Tiberius Caesar, and I believe on the other side was either his wife or his mother. It might have been his mother on the other side of the coin at the time. I have to brush up on my studies there. But it basically says that like Caesar is God, and that's what's on the money. And so um, he says, it. whose picture's on it? Who owns the money? So he says, render to Caesar what is Caesar, and to God what is God. It's a very important statement. If Caesar's image is on the coin and his wording and he prints them and he owns them they're his they belong to him so render to him what is his where are you living you're living in his kingdom render to him what is his but this is the other side of this jesus says and to god what is god so remember whose image is on you god's image like it or not believe it or not in genesis 1 26 and 27 the, when they're, when the, um, uh, the, the great council of heaven got together and they're getting ready to make man, what's it say? Let us make man in our image. 
in the very image of God, let us make them like a male and female. We will make them in the image of God. And so in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, you can read that. So there's a comparison here. Whose image is on the coin? Render unto Caesar what is Caesar, because his image is on the coin. And then the image that's on you and I. Render unto God what is God's. Who did he pay for? Who did he create? Who did he create all this world for and then place them into it? Us. And we are his image. We are the very image and likeness of God himself. As he designed, as he saw fit to create us, we have the image of God on us. And every one of us is individual. You know, we have all have different fingerprints, different retina scans, different all these things. We are individual, but don't we all kind of look the same? You know, we're a little bit different shades of color, perhaps, different color hair, things like that. But granted, uh, in all in, in all properness and all rightness, we are the image of God as he created us, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. So render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto Caesar the coins that are his. Render unto Caesar that which has his image upon it. And render unto God that which has his image upon it. And that would be you. And so that's what he said. Render, image, well, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is God's. So he's calling for them to come to the um, conclusion or the uh, to recognition or acknowledgement that they are made in the image of God. They're supposed to be doing God's service, and right now, at this time, they're betraying God. And for all of us, we render our taxes to our government. Uh, their image is on that. It's their money. Give it back to them, whatever they want. And then we render unto God what is God. What does God want? He wants you. Each individual, he wants you. Why? Because he's already placed his image on each one of us. He wants our hearts, our minds, our bodies to be used in his service. And again, I'll stick to this and I'll say this forever, that if we could just do that, all the things we want from this earth could be ours. Peace, um, not, I wouldn't say ever a perfect society, because it's always going to be a society made of men, but just peace, just getting along, just prosperity, all these things we can have if we render the image, which is God's, back to God. And that's our heart, mind, and soul. He has imprinted upon us all these things. There ain't a person I've ever met, by the way, that who doesn't eventually admit that there is a God. People that literally, even if they say, well, I'm an atheist, it's impossible, or I'm agnostic, there's no way to know. There's, all, there's always a time when you're sitting with somebody and a moment pops up or a situation pops up and they'll finally admit, you know, I do believe there's something, I just can't explain it. Now, there you go, there's your start. So it's within each one of us to believe. Everybody and every society, anywhere in all of history, does a few things. Uh, they create shelter, they have food, they have clothing, they have some type of social environment or culture and they worship something. Why do they worship something? Because within us, God has placed within us a God-shaped hole in each person that He only He can fill. And so we have our image. The image of God is on us. He wants to be within us in our heart and take His rightful place. So this is a great question. It's a great, um, this is number one out of three. This is the battle with the Pharisees or the argument with the Pharisees. And it says that Jesus answered this question. He says, whose portrait is this? Whose inscription is this? Uh, again, Tiberius Caesar claimed to be God um, and ruler of all religions, by the way, in this time. He claimed to be God, not only God, but ruler of all religions, which is interesting. So placing himself above God. So they say, Caesar's, they replied. And then Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. So give, this, give him your money, give him your stuff, give him whatever. The only thing that really matters is what you give to God. And I, you got to ask yourself, and that's to each individual. Do you give unto God what is God's? Heart, soul, mind, body, attitude, daily life. Do you go to God before you make big decisions? Do you go to God before? Now, there's things we're, we know to do to step out in faith and just go do. But there's times when we need to ask God, hey, what, do, what should I do in this situation? But anyway, he answers it, and it says they were amazed at him. They tried to trap him, and it didn't work. So... Uh, let me look at a few things. I made some notes here. Um, just the conflict. Whose portrait is on this? Um, and then there's, there's a final question. I had this question too. 
So priests were against idolatry. It was the breaking of one of the first four commandments was being a, an idolater. Why in the world? So this is a question you can ask. And something to ponder is if the, cre the, the priests preach against idolatry, why are they carrying a coin in their pocket that has the image of Tiberius Caesar on it, who claims to be the ruler of all religions and God of all gods? And so that's an interesting question. I thought about that while I was reading this. Why do they have that in their pocket when they have temple money? They probably shouldn't have, or they would be violating their own rules and the law by carrying a coin around with Tiberius Caesar's picture on it because he claimed to be a god that would be idolatrous even in the mind of the priest. So certainly he would accuse you of it. Um, and so anyway, that's, that's just one another question I had or the thought. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've seen arguments. Remember, don't get into argument unless you know it's going to have some advantage or some um, benefit to the church. I don't really, most of the time, there's not uh, an end goal. Um, there, there's an end goal, but there's, you'd never accomplish that. So, for example, um, I've watched Richard Dawkins date, uh, debate Frank Turig. I've watched him debate John Lennox. And when Ken Ham debated uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy back at the Creation Museum a few years ago, I was there for that. And I think CNN was there and a few other places. So really, I asked myself, what do you accomplish? You, basically, you state your case. People that come in in those events are either supporting one side or the other, and they're not going to be swayed. So if you want to put out the information, if you want to verbally challenge other people, do it if you want to. But I'm going to tell you that most of the people in the crowd are not going to be swayed. You can present the truth, and hopefully somebody watching or somebody seeking the truth will find that video and learn something from it. But um, uh, don't get caught up in arguments when you don't have to. Look for the people seeking truth. Um, but, you know, as we know, everybody likes a good argument. So I'm sure there was people watching this. And I'm sure if you have an argument, there'll be people there to watch that too. But make sure it's for the benefit of God. A lot of times you can argue and it just makes God look bad. It makes Christians look bad. I see it a lot. Christians arguing. Um, anyway, I won't get into all that. I've had it happen. Uh, but anyway, make sure it's for the greater good. Render unto Caesar. What is Caesar's? Render your taxes unto the government. And render unto God. What is God? You are the image of God. And he wants you back. And that's where it is. So I hope everybody has a great day. That's argument number one. We'll get into argument number two tomorrow. That'll be the argument with the Sadducees, which I think is a three-part argument, a really neat argument that Jesus has with uh, the Sadducees. So I uh, hope everybody has a great day and, and a great weekend. And Monday, we have our interview with Ray Sidnor at 1 o'clock. That will be uh, recorded. And then we'll process that and hopefully post it by the end of the week. So if you want to look up Raymond Sidnor, a former Wisconsin football, basketball player, played it. Uh, this was back in the 80s. Um, played for the Pittsburgh Steelers and also played for the Philadelphia Eagles. A great man, a great man of God. A lot of, a lot of story there with Ray. He's phenomenal. He's a great speaker. If you're ever looking for somebody to come and pump up your youth group or start a, have a VBS or have a basketball thing, Ray's one of the best guys I could ever think to bring that in. And, uh, and anyway, there's, there's something to consider. Look him up, study him, and he'll be on. Hopefully, uh, we know Monday at 1, but then by the end of the week, we'll have that video posted. So I hope everybody's doing great. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.